Okay. So the next building block that we shall be looking at is following 1 plus j omega tau to the power plus minus 1 where plus 1 will uh, account for the 0 and minus 1 will imply it's a pole that we are dealing with. Okay. So quickly let us find out omega tau much much less than 1 is one of the ranges omega tau is equal to 1 is another and omega tau greater than 1 is another these are the three domains in which we are interested in plotting m omega and phi omega so let's see the behaviors so in this you can readily verify that m omega turns out to be 1 because omega tau is negligible we are ignoring this so let me just say this is an approximation and phi omega <coughs> is 0 degrees here is the interesting bit here m omega is equal to square root of 2 okay to the power plus minus 1 and phi omega is equal to plus minus 45 degrees okay I leave it to you to verify this this is not really difficult to check on the other hand in this domain when omega tau is much much greater phi omega is close to plus minus 90 degrees and m omega <coughs> can be approximated by omega tau now remember whenever we are talking about omega uh, m omega eventually we will be plotting 20 log m omega so bear that in mind okay so when you pass this m omega through this function here then this is equivalent to 0 dB okay so that is important this behaves sorry I'll just erase that <clears throat> behaves similar to a pure integrator slash differentiator okay so I'll, we already know how an integrator or a differentiator behaves it just rises or falls the differentiator rises the integrator falls at the rate of 20 db per decade is it not We've already seen that. Of course, there's this tau to be considered here. That's just a normalizing factor. So quickly, let us just take a look at what this uh, plot will look like. Okay. Here we go. This is omega. Okay. So let's say this is 20 log m omega db and this is phi of omega in degrees. So we quickly mark out 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, minus 45 degrees and minus 90 degrees. All right good here also we mark out 0 db 20 db 40 db <clears throat> minus 20 db and minus 40 db <clears throat> okay so for the uh, magnitude plot we again adopt the same method as before only this time of course first we have to draw the frequencies this is 0 0.001 0 0.01 0 0.1, 1.0, 10.0, 
100.0. Okay, so decades split up like that. So we'll do the same thing in the <coughs> other plot as well. Do the same thing in the other plot as well, which is to say like this. So because it's on the same graph paper, I'm not rewriting these uh, frequencies in this axis. It's essentially the same thing, isn't it? So now, what do we do? We know that, look closely. Look at the low frequency range when omega tau is much, much less than one. Suppose we consider the, the block to be one plus j omega tau the power plus minus 1 and tau is equal to let's say 10. It could be any value. It could be 1 which is the simplest case. We are just considering 10 here. So now suppose tau is equal to 10 here. Right? So look at something interesting here. What happens? This is 0. 0 dB. What happens at the higher frequency range? Alright? <clears throat> the higher frequency range at omega tau is equal to 1, it is exactly equal to root 2 or 1 by root 2. So what does this imply? If you pass it through the dv scale, it is 20 log of, actually it's plus minus 20 log of <coughs> 2. And if you remember your log tables from your childhood, you would know that log of 2 is 0 0.30 something, 30103 or something like that. So this is well approximated by a plus minus 6 <coughs> dB. Alright. <coughs> so therefore, you know that at the corner frequency, which is when omega tau is equal to 1, omega tau is equal to 1 implies omega is equal to 0 0.1 <coughs> in our case, isn't it? Because tau is equal to 10 here. So this becomes our critical or corner frequency in this case. This is what we call a corner frequency. Okay. So, at the corner frequency you know that for plus 1 it is at plus 6 dB, for minus 1 it is at minus 6 dB. So, let me mark out those points. So, at corner frequency it is maybe somewhere here which is plus 6 dB <coughs> and let me mark the green one. This is minus 6 dB. Let me draw the lower frequency asymptote quickly. So the lower frequency asymptote is at 0. Okay, this is a straight line even if it doesn't look like one. Excuse me for the poor drawing. <coughs> what about the higher frequency <coughs> asymptote? You see, if you just consider the higher frequency asymptote, then 20 log of omega tau at omega tau is equal to 1 is 0. So therefore, the higher frequency and the lower frequency asymptotes, they meet at the corner frequency. So there is a continuity at least in this way of description. So therefore, if you want to draw the higher frequency asymptote, in one decade above, it will be 20 dB. Two decades above, it will be 40 dB. Why is this so? Once again, look at the function. At every decade, this omega tau becomes 10 times in the than its value in the preceding decade. 10 times its value than it was in the preceding decade. So therefore, log of 10 times a value, yeah, it just gets added. Just 20 dB gets added. 20 log 10, which is 20. Is it not? So therefore, This is going to be, I'm sorry, this is going to be the plot for 1 plus j omega tau to the power plus 1. By the same token, this is going to be the plot for 1 plus j omega tau to the power minus 1. Again, so this is minus 20 dB per decade and this is plus, sorry, I'm sorry, so this is 
plus 20 db per decade okay now you might ask then why did we do this correction or why did we compute this so if you're not happy with these asymptotes as it is it's beautiful that they're intersecting but if you're still not happy with these asymptotes intersecting okay let me draw this better yeah so if you're not happy with these asymptotes intersecting because you have an extra data point you might want to fit your curve better so then this is the sort of correction that you introduce so eventually you might say that this is my actual this is my actual Bode plot so the asymptotic Bode plot in so far as the asymptotic Bode plot is concerned this would not matter this is inconsequential but if you want more accuracy in the magnitude plot then you are free to perform these corrections okay this is just an approximation so don't ask me how i am starting or where i am starting yeah, i'm just trying to blend it in nicely so just bending around the corners as it were so this looks like a sharp corner doesn't look good so i'm trying to just blend it in so this is basically a six decibels correction below and this is a six decibels correction above but now the interesting bit starts unlike the asymptote for the magnitude plot the asymptotes for the phase plot do not behave so well yeah just look at this so if you just consider concern yourself with the asymptote of the phase plot look this is plus minus 90 degrees and here it is just zero degrees so there is a jump discontinuity so these two asymptotes if you just blindly yeah let me just for a trial draw this if we just blindly draw this asymptote till here which is your corner frequency and then from here on you say I, I will follow this asymptote or this asymptote depending on whether it's a pole or a zero then you'd have a problem on your hands because there's a discontinuity of plus 90 or minus 90 at this corner frequency so this asymptote doesn't really make any sense here so what is it that makes sense under such circumstances so what we do in that case is what we do in that case is instead of okay let me draw this line here oops that was bad yeah so what we do in that case is we stop one decade before so this is where different textbooks have different sorry different textbooks have different conventions so some textbooks would say and both are correct it's basically at the end of the day you have to understand that this is just an approximation okay so many textbooks would just take one decade above or below and one decade above okay so they say we'll follow the higher asymptote from one decade above the corner frequency and the lower asymptote till one decade below the corner frequency but many other textbooks would say and this is what i personally prefer instead of going exactly one decade above and one decade below what they say is go one fifth of the way down so if this is point one let's find out some point here which is 0 0.02 one fifth of the corner frequency and let's go five times the corner frequency which is 0 0.5 okay and based on the fact that we know that at the corner frequency this is exactly the value plus minus 45 degrees so once again what they would suggest is that okay let me draw the lower frequency asymptote till as far as i can which is one fifth of the way down this is common to both plus one and minus one common to both of them and then I know that at the corner frequency it is exactly equal to 45 or minus 45 and five times the way up the corner frequency this is going to be 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees so you draw the higher asymptotes from five times the way up and then simply join sorry doesn't look good so then simply okay come on that's bad I can do better surely 
but yeah so these are straight lines even though they look horrendous okay Right. So this is at 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees, and this is at plus 90 degrees. So this is your phase plot. Now again, just like we introduced some corrections at the corner frequency here. If you are very particular about this, I am really not too bothered about it. But if you want to evaluate this, and if you are someone who is really fastidious about this, then you just say that tan 0.2, which is tan 1 fifth, is almost equal to 0.2. Okay. So therefore, and 0 0.2 radians is equal to 11 degrees. Similarly, you can say that tan inverse 5 is almost equal to 79 degrees. You can just check this in your calculators because ultimately this is just some calculation, right? So therefore, at these values, these corner frequencies, you have to introduce a correction of 11 degrees. So how do you introduce that? It turns out that here you make a correction of 11 degrees above and here 11 degrees below. So then if you are very finicky, you can go about like this and get your approximate phase plot. If you are not happy with the asymptote that is, so this is 11 degrees. This is also 11 degrees and the same thing you can do with the one corresponding to the pole. I'm sorry. Yeah. So 11 degrees here and minus 79 degrees here. Oh, where did I remove that? Okay. So you can just pass it through these points here, get an approximate. So remember that the straight line segments which are this, this and this, these are the asymptotes. If you are happy with the asymptotes, you can just stop right there. You don't need to introduce this 11 degree correction. But if you are not happy with these asymptotes, then of course, now that we've already evaluated that this tan inverse 5 and tan inverse 0.2 is like uh, 79 degrees and 11 degrees respectively. Therefore, you can introduce these corrections also. So thereby we have now covered the correction blocks, I mean the magnitude and the phase plots for the other building block which is this uh, first order term, a first order pole or a zero, a real pole or a zero. So the next structure we shall be considering and it will be a new video, although it's a continuation of the same lecture. So it will be a new video and we shall consider the second order complex poles and zeros. Okay. Thank you.